What's up guys, Soberman back again with another video, another topic, another discussion on some sobriety, another discussion on addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, alcohol, drug, same thing, doesn't matter man, addiction is addiction, that's what I'm here for, give a little bit of support, a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of love, it's all good, anyway, you know, I was thinking about something the other day. Well, a couple of things I was thinking about last night. And, uh, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, when that guy, the alcoholic or the drug addict that people see out in the streets, out in the corner, the guy, you know, begging for money, the guy with the brown paper bag, the guy sleeping on, on a cardboard box or something like that. You know, and it leads me to think about some, you know, and here's, here's something. Okay. Think about kids, right? Now, when you're drinking in front of your kids, I, you know, I'm not telling anybody what to do. You do you. Okay. This is just me talking. This is my channel. Damn it. But when you're drinking in front of kids, and I know I was a kid, when you're drinking in front of your kids, man, and okay, think about it like this, right? Let's say you and your husband, you know, Friday night come, you come home, you know, you guys come home with a nice chocolate cake, you know, and get relaxed, you know, take off your work clothes, put on some relaxing clothes, you know, put on a little music, get the atmosphere going, and you sit there, you know, you cut a piece of cake, cut a nice little slice here, put it on a nice pretty plate, pass it to your wife, you cut yourself a slice, and you guys sit down and you eat this cake, and you're like, oh God, yeah, that is good. All of a sudden, you know, the mood go up a little bit better. You guys want to play with each other, want to have fun. You know, your kid's sitting there and your kid's thinking like, can I have some cake? I mean, why wouldn't they? You know, it's like, you guys are happy to eating cake. No, 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 no. You, you can't have no cake. This is this is for adults. This is adult stuff. You know, I can't. I can't give. I mean, who in the right mind would give their their child some alcohol? You know, I mean, okay. Granted, there are some people that do it. The average kid that starts drinking starts drinking at about twelve years old. But the reason for that is because, damn it, I mean, mom and dad have cake, and whenever they have cake. They look like they really like cake, so I can't wait. I mean, what kid have you not, and this is not just regards to alcohol, but what kid have you not heard say, I can't wait until I grow up. I can't wait until I'm an adult. I'm going to do whatever I want. You know what they're saying? I'm going to have as much cake as I want, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. When you're drinking in front of your kid, man, to them, it doesn't, because it doesn't look like poison, which it is, you know, doesn't look like something that can destroy your life, which it is. To them, it looked like a special goodie, a little treat that's reserved for adults. And that's not right. I mean, I want some. But anyway, man. You know, so this got me to thinking, and you know, the thing is, when it comes to alcohol, man, this is why alcohol is so dangerous, because it's it's a socially acceptable drug, and yes, I said drug, it's a drug, it's a socially acceptable drug, you know, not even cigarette is socially acceptable anymore. Any 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 addictive drug like that that you use and you decide to get off it, you decide to stop smoking crack, you decide to stop shooting up heroin, you heroin, you decide to stop smoking cigarettes, you you know, people are going to people are supportive. 
even cigarette. Even the people who use these drugs, they might, some of them might not, but some of them might, you know, uh, what did you do? How did you stop? You know, how did you, did you use Nicorette? What did you do to stop? Because they want to stop too. You know what I mean? But that's not the case with alcohol, man. You stop drinking alcohol and people want to know why. Why why, why would you do that? Even if you're not someone who uh, is like an alcoholic and you don't have a serious alcohol problem, even if that's not the case and you're just someone who drink alcohol on a regular basis, but it's not causing you a lot of problems and you just decide you know what mm, now nah, i want to cut this out of my life people are you you go you go somewhere and and you say okay no nah, i'm not drinking you know i don't I, I stop why people think like something's wrong with you but that's how that's how people view alcohol you know there's a story that i heard the other day and it's anyway so this alcoholic died and he went to hell right now when he got to hell you know satan kind of showed him around gave him the layout plans and show him everything how, ni how nice it is and how it's gonna burn for the rest of his life well satan took him to this huge gigantic pot right pot was like full of boiling lava and when you look in it there's a bunch of people in it and they're all trying to get out you know and every time one of them try to get out there's like these little um demons with pitchfork just as soon as they grab the rim of it <clears throat> get back in there you know so you, you think you're going you're here for life you know, every time one of them try to get out, you know, the alcoholic looked at Satan like, "What's what's happening there?" And he said, "Oh, those are uh, those are the crack addicts. They're always trying to get out, man. You know, they they think they're gonna escape, but there is no escaping from this hell." Kept on going, got to another huge pot, boiling with lava, and all these guys are in there. Guys, women, everybody, they constantly trying to get out. And it's the same thing, you know. And every time one of them try to get out and they grab up on the rim and start climbing up, you know, these little devils just sit right there at their pitchfork, <clears throat> get back in there. And it's like, so Satan said, oh, oh, those, those guys are the um, heroin addict. They, they, they think they're going to get out too, but there is no escape from this hell. I got them forever eternity went to the next spot same thing boiling with lava and all these souls are are trying to escape and they're climbing and every time one of them get close to the rim and grab onto it and about to get up he just like disappears there and and there's no devils around with pitchfork that that's like making sure he doesn't get out and uh the guy the alcoholic looked at satan and was like well what is that why didn't he get out oh uh, that, that's that's the ones for the alcoholic it's like we don't we don't put devils around there to protect them from getting out because every time one of them try to get out the other one is going to pull him right back in so we ain't got to worry about him but that's where you're gonna go get on in there that's how it is with alcohol in society, man. You know, you try to get out, man, people are going to make you feel like you're the one doing something wrong. You know what I mean? But there's something else I was really thinking about. I, 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 enough of the jokes, but there's something else I was really thinking about, man. You know, because a lot of times, man, when you see dumb guys on the street corner, you know, you might see this guy 50, 60 years old and literally look like hell. And he is in hell, you know, look like he hasn't had a shower in years and just horrible begging. And, you know, people have a tendency to look at this guy and what they see is a horrible, terrible, downtrodden human being that's just like no hope, you know, and... 
they may be right, you know. But um, I think what people don't see sometimes is that, man, that guy, that 65-year-old guy that's sitting out there that can't escape that hell, that that guy was once two years old, you know, the pride and joy of his mother and father. And they treated him with love and they couldn't wait to get up every morning to go play with their little baby. You know what I mean? They don't see that that guy was once a kid that was five, six years old, have brothers and sisters that he play with, argue with, fight with, and have fun with. And they loved him and he loved them, you know? They don't see that. All they see is the end results, you know? They don't see that guy as a guy that was once happy. He had a day where he was so happy. The first day his big sister taught him how to ride his first bike. You know, when he was eight, seven, eight years old, his sister taught him how to ride his bike and he couldn't believe that he was actually doing it. Man, this is great. I'm never going to stop riding bike. You know, people don't see that, man. They don't see that this guy at one point in his life, you know, he was in school, you know, making friends, you know, he was good with science, maybe not good with math just a regular human being that he was kind of shy when it comes to girls but put him on the football field and he was a beast man you know people don't see that they see that bum you know they don't even wonder how he got there you know they don't see that this guy was once in love when he got his first girlfriend got that first kiss and he was so happy man i'm in love for life i'm never gonna leave her she's the love of my life she kissed me and you know all that stuff they don't see the human being man you know they don't see that this guy might have even at one point had a nice home went to college got a master degree got married you know had kids, a wife that loved them, kids that admired them. They don't see that, that that was even possible for that guy. They don't see that he did have that at one point. All they see is this piece of shit because here's the thing with alcohol, man. With alcoholism, it usually doesn't come on you like a thief in the night. That's not how it happens, man. Nobody, like, gets up one day, you know, and go buy a bottle of wine and you're just like, oh, my God, holy crap, the cops showed up at my house, arrested me, you know, the mortgage holder sent me a notice saying that they're taking my house. They don't, that's not how that happened, man. It doesn't just happen like that. Your first, I mean, if that's how it happened, most people probably would like say, I, I ain't never doing that again, <laughs> you know. But that ain't how it happened, man. It don't happen like that. It happened gradually, you know. Most people, when they try their first drink, they don't even like it. That's just about anybody when they tried their first drink. Most people tried their first drink when they were young. And they'll tell you that when they first tried that drink, they didn't even like it. I first tried my my first drink and I never forgot it. It was a Guinness stout that me and my cousin stole from my grandfather. And we it was me and two of my cousins. We stole it, opened it, and when we when when we sip it now, I remember when I sipped that thing, I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ. This is nasty. How does he drink this? But I couldn't show that. It, you know, my cousin took their sip. They drink it. I don't even think we finished it. Seriously, I don't even think we finished it. But they probably felt the same way I did. They probably talked to themselves. Oh, but they, they, they're they not. I mean, we're not going to show that. We're manning up. You know, we're not going to let everybody see that we're cowards like that. Most people, when they try their first alcohol, man, you know, 
it's nasty. But if when you tried your first drink that day, the cops showed up and arrest you for DUI, that day they take your house, that day you get you start having kidney problems, liver problems, that day your boss laid you off and say they can't keep you around anymore. No, you wouldn't go back. But it takes time. And sometimes it takes years and years. And you wanna know something? A lot of people are struggling. One of the things is why you may not think that's the case is because a lot of people hide it well. There are a lot of people out there who wish they could stop drinking, but they can't. But a lot of them never ever reach that point where it is causing that much problem in their life. Or even if they reach that point, it takes a long time before they become that guy, you know, or they never reach that point, but it causes it caused enough problems in their life that they know they should quit, but it's not causing enough problems in their life that they have to quit or it'll, it'll destroy their life. You know, maybe they're drinking on a regular basis and they're thinking to themselves, man, I know I should quit, man. I embarrassed myself last night. I look like a fool. You know, I treated this mom like that. I act like this. I did this. I said that, you know, but it's not costing them their job yet. It's not costing them a DUI yet. You know, it's not costing them their family their car, their kids, their wife, their husband. It's not, you know, they haven't paid those price yet. But a lot of people, even after they reach that point, a lot of times it's too late because you're no longer drinking just for social uh, reasons. You're drinking because you're an, adapt you're an addict now. You're drinking because the alcohol has a hold on you and you can't let go. It's a ridiculous, vicious cycle, man. And it can happen to anyone. No one is immune to it. Anybody that drinks and consumes any amount of alcohol, it can happen to them. It's not a special select group of people that wind up being alcoholic to the extreme. It can happen to anybody. So even if you're struggling a little bit or you're struggling a lot or you're a full grown, blown alcoholic or addict or whatever, don't sit there and feel bad about it, first of all, because it can happen to anybody. And don't let anybody, anybody, I don't care who it is, don't let anybody make you feel bad for it. Seriously, because there are people that are hiding worse addiction than drugs and alcohol, okay? I won't go into that. That's another day. But don't let anybody make you feel bad for it. What you need to do is focus on the solution. Focus on finding a, a solution to the problem. There is not a one-size-fit all solution for alcoholism or addiction or whatever the case is you know for me personally my solution was to reach for spiritual help okay well my life i consider it to be a great life okay but i'm not gonna sit here and tell anybody that the only way to recovery the only path to recovery is spirituality me personally i believe a spiritual life is beneficial to anyone regardless of whether you are an addict or not i believe it's beneficial to anybody but i'm not the type of person that push things on people because I don't, I believe you do more damage to people when you try to push things on them rather than just, you know, love people. 
be there for people if you can. You know, if you can't, at least try not to hurt them, man. And I'm going to finish off by saying this. Find something in your life, man, that gives your life meaning and purpose. Find your purpose. Find what it is that you are here to, con to contribute to the world, to contribute to life. Find what it is that gives your life that special meaning and that special purpose. And get on your purpose, man. Even if you're, what you find purposeful for life is something that you may have to do on the weekend when you're off from work. Or maybe your purpose is something that you can do for a living. But even if it's not, man, you know, like for me, drawing gives my life purpose. I can't wait to come home and draw. You know, this this another little piece of artwork I was working on last night. You know, I don't do, I'm not Picasso. I ain't some great artist. You know, people come to my house. Some some people are like, man, that is really nice art, you know. I don't draw for accolades. I don't draw so people can like my art. I draw because of the pay I get out of it. Okay, it pays me. I get paid to do this. But it's not, I don't get paid money. I get paid spiritually i get a relief when i sit down and i start drawing and it can become an addiction because sometimes i'm like looking at the clock like oh my god man it's one o'clock in the morning and i, I need to get to bed because i got to get up early you know but when i do go to bed and i wake up i feel good better than any drugs or alcohol could have given me Find something that pays you spiritually. That's, that's for me, if somebody was to ask me right now, man, how do you find your purpose? I would think that you would find your purpose by something that pays you spiritually. You know, there's a, you know, there's another quote from um, the Bible. It says, where your heart is, there is where you will find your treasure. That's where you will get paid. That's really where you will get paid. Where your heart is. All right, man. Hey, get on your purpose, man. And enjoy this life. This life is beautiful. This life is wonderful. And I don't give a damn who you are, or how far you have been, or what you have done. If you're some woman who, at one point, in life, man, you had, you were out there selling your body just to get high, just to get some crack, just to get some cocaine or heroin or whatever, man. Don't let anybody make you feel bad about any of that. Seriously, I'm telling you because I know how that stuff can eat at you and make you feel terrible about yourself, man. If you're some guy that has done some horrible, terrible things just to get high, rob people, you know, or drugs and alcohol might have made you did things to people. Don't don't sit there and let people make you feel bad. Do what you need to do to get off the alcohol and drugs. And gradually, what you'll start finding is all the destructive things that you may have done. Just by living a better life, you'll find that you'll be making up for it. You will, and you will be, you will reap the rewards of that new life that you're now living. Anyway, man, enough ranting. This video went on for a lot longer than I thought it uh, would have. All right, guys, I'm out.